Hey everyone, Chad Easty here, host of the Chad Easty Show. Coming up on a Monday's edition of the program, we've got a lot to get into. Don't forget to subscribe to the KFYO YouTube page right below and follow me on Twitter, Chad Easty Radio. On the show, it airs 8.30 to 11 a.m. Central Time. And uh, you can listen on 790-KFYO online at KFYO.com or via the Radio Pup app. Search for KFYO and you can listen wherever you travel. The big topic from over the weekend, violence at the Donald Trump rallies. Uh, Is Donald Trump responsible for the violence that broke out? Uh, This all starting on Friday uh, with a uh, protest uh, that happened at one of his rallies in Chicago. The rally was interrupted by thousands of protesters. Uh, who uh, proceeded to uh, get into a few fights. Fists were thrown, uh, of course, inside the uh, arena there in Chicago, outside the arena. You had protesters uh, who were shouting, F the police. Uh, They were shouting, Bernie, Bernie, Bernie. Uh, Bernie Sanders supporters were there. Uh, You had people uh, assaulting police officers. I believe two officers were injured. Uh, Five people arrested. Only five people arrested. Probably could have arrested a lot more than that. Uh, at one time, there were protesters attempting to block traffic on the freeway. Uh, so all of this happened at the Donald Trump rally. The media uh, you know, went forward in blaming Donald Trump for everything that happened. Uh, then the next day in Dayton, Ohio, uh, you had a guy who charged the stage, almost got to Donald Trump, if not uh, got to his, uh, you know, was able to grab his leg possibly, but he got very close to Donald Trump before the Secret Service put the guy down on his face in the cement, which was always... Uh, good to see how stupid you have to be to try and do uh, that to a presidential candidate. Uh, if you're uh, that stupid, well, you, know, you deserve the beating that follows uh, from the Secret Service. Uh, so is the big question uh, that uh, and the big topic that's uh, been uh, been going on and the big discussion point that's been going on since the violence and since all the protests at the Donald Trump rallies, is Donald Trump responsible? Well, in some ways, yes, because he's used divisive language. He's told crowds, oh, I wish you could punch the protesters in the face. Uh, He did on Sunday say that uh, his legal team was looking into paying uh, the legal fees for that 78-year-old crank uh, who was in the stands uh, at a Trump rally last week who uh, sucker punched a a, a protester. Uh, I mean, that's a shame. Uh, Trump is encouraging this in a way. Uh, though people have to have personal responsibility. Uh, But I'll say this, the protesters uh, who got involved in this uh, on Friday, uh, on Saturday, and maybe going forward, uh, look, this is an organized protest uh, by MoveOn.org, by liberals, by some Bernie Sanders supporters. I don't want to say that the Sanders campaign is responsible for this, but if you're going to blame Donald Trump uh, for uh, for what he has said, uh, and, and hold Donald Trump responsible for what his supporters do. In a way, you have to hold Bernie Sanders responsible for what his supporters do in his name. He should at least come out and say, hey guys, we don't act this way, don't do this, this is not uh, democracy, uh, shutting down free speech is not the way uh, things should go. It's a shame to see what's happened, but Donald Trump is not the only one to blame here. Uh, this goes back years uh, you look at the Obama administration. The Obama administration has been much more divisive than Donald Trump. Uh, you go back and you look at the Black Lives Matter protests. They get upset at you if you say all lives matter. That's divisive. You look at uh, things that have happened uh, in the media lately, where uh, going back a couple of years where you've had protests in the streets. Divisiveness uh, has only expanded in the United States. It's not Donald Trump's fault. Uh, Donald Trump and his supporters Uh, This is the reaction to the years and years and years of divisiveness of uh, of uh, so many people uh, saying that, uh, you know, it's the fault of the man or it's the fault of, uh, you know, all white people uh, out there. Look, divisiveness has gotten worse in this country. Uh, Donald Trump isn't helping things, but solely blaming Trump, in my opinion, is just plain ignorance. Uh, out there. Uh, You have to blame some of these other groups that their sole mission is to disrupt and shut down free speech. It's the wrong thing to do. I have no problem with people protesting outside of arenas uh, or anything like that, but to shut down free speech is ignorance and it's very dangerous for this country. The shameful thing is, going forward, we're going to see more of this. Uh, This election has become a black eye on the country. Uh, It is a shameful election that we're dealing with. We have so many great candidates or had so many great candidates in the Republican field, uh, and it's being overrun right now uh, by divisive politics. It's sad to see 
and one has to wonder what we're going to see going forward. But again, you can't just blame Donald Trump for this. This goes back years with the Obama administration and with groups that uh, try to really prey on the ignorance of uh, a lot of young people uh, and a lot of people who uh, just don't feel as though uh, they have anywhere to go in life. We'll talk more about this throughout the week on the show and, of course, on the show, 830 to 11, Chad HD Show, weekday mornings uh, on KFYO, 790 AM, KFYO.com. Follow me on Twitter, Chad HD Radio. Have a great day.